We're going to next look at the acromioclavicular joint. To look at the acromioclavicular joint, we have one of two approaches that work well. We can follow the biceps tendon up to where it just starts to disappear underneath the acromion. If you rotate the probe up over that, you'll usually be right at the acromioclavicular joint. Now, the other way of finding this is simply to palpate the joint. And here, we can actually see screen left is the acromion, screen right is the clavicle, and this represents the acromioclavicular joint. I'm going to give a little bit of gain to this to perhaps make it a little easier for you to see. But this, again, is the clavicle. This is the acromion. This represents the acromioclavicular joint. And the capsule of the joint is here. And the internal meniscus of the joint is this bright area in through here. From this position, I'm going to slide the probe laterally. And we're going to look at the supraspinatus tendon in its neutral position. This is not the position that we use to evaluate the supraspinatus tendon typically because we only see a small portion of the tendon. As we raise his arm up, you'll see the movement occurring between the bursa and the tendon below it. So there's actually the movement between deltoid and the supraspinatus tendon. We can use this position to look for impingement. So as I raise his arm up, we'll see this sliding underneath. We'll see the tendon sliding underneath the acromion. We're going to look at the supraspinatus tendon, where we see most of our rotator cuff tears. There are a couple different positions that we can use, and the first one that I'm going to use to examine this is to put him in what is known as the crass position. I want him to bend forwards a little bit, put his arm behind his back, place his hand or the back of his hand in his opposite back pocket. In this position, what we've done is we've taken the supraspinatus tendon from its neutral position and we have rotated it forward so that it is now in the position of my, the position of my fingers. So that when we examine this tendon in its long axis, we'll simply take this probe and place it as such. If we place it in the front of the shoulder, we'll usually get a good view of the supraspinatus tendon. And this represents the greater tuberosity, and this represents the humeral head with cartilage back here, with hyaline cartilage back here. As I adjust the probe, you can see how dark that is. I'm going to bring down the focal zones to that same level to improve our view. But here we are. There is the articular cartilage. This is the anatomical neck of the humerus. This is the greater tuberosity. Here is the supraspinatus tendon. There, this bright area above it is peribursal fat. The little black line below it is actually the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, and this represents a deltoid here. Remember, this tendon is about 2.25 centimeters wide. So in order to see it, we need to go across it and see the whole amount. So we need to go anterior and posterior if we were in the neutral position. But since we brought this tendon forwards, we're going to go medial and lateral relative to his body to see the whole width of the tendon. As we go anterior, which will be medial in this case, we'll come to the point where we'll see the biceps tendon. So we want to go as far as we can to try to see if we can find the biceps tendon. Now, it may be difficult in the crass position, so to make the, this a little easier for us, we're going to go to what we call a modified crass position. So what I want you to do is I'd like you to scoot a little bit towards me on the chair so that you're not the chair itself, but you're, that's it, so that your arm can come back here. I want you to place your hand on the outside of your hip or just back this way and bring your elbow in a little bit this direction. Are you okay like that? Yep. Okay, good. All right. Now, if I put the, the probe in the same position that I had it before, I will not see a good view of the supraspinatus tendon. I'm halfway between the neutral position where the probe was here and the full crass position where the tendon was here, so it should be right about here, about halfway between the two, and there it is. Now in this position, it will be easier for me to move anteriorly, or as I said before, medial, and find the biceps tendon which is now, he's got such good muscularity, I'm going to need to give a little greater depth on this view so that we can see it. But right here on the image 
is the beginning to see the biceps, tendon, and its long axis. That tells me I'm right at the anterior edge of the supraspinatus. Very important region because that's the region where we see most of our rotator cuff tears.